In this tutorial, I'll introduce you to tessellation shaders in OpenGL, showing you how to use them and what they're good at. So what do tessellation shaders do? Well, they basically just divide primitives into more primitives so that your geometry has a higher resolution without having it to send more data from the CPU to the GPU, which can be quite slow. Though keep in mind, they are sort of useless when it comes to handmade models, since even if you divided the geometry, you can't know how to displace the new vertices you have. On the other hand, using procedural generation, you can always calculate the position of the new primitives that are generated. So there are actually three tessellation shaders, two of which are customizable. These lie between the vertex shader and the geometry shader. The first one, the tessellation control shader, defines the amount of subdivisions to be made. Then the tessellation primitive generator generates the primitives needed for the division. And finally, the tessellation evaluation shader decides where those new vertices should be placed. Let's first take care of the CPU side so that we can fully focus on the shaders afterwards. As an example, I will tessellate a plane. If you don't know how to make a plane, check out my tutorial on that from my procedural generation series. So first of all, instead of drawing the plane using GL triangles, I will draw it using GL patches. Patches for tessellation shaders are like word groups for compute shaders. And each of these patches will represent a square in my plane. So I also have to use slightly different indices from the ones I would normally use to draw a plane. The order of the indices is up to you, but I like to go in a counterclockwise rotation starting from the bottom left corner. The last things we need to do is to create some empty tessellation shaders, link them to our desired shader program, and tell OpenGL how many vertices we are going to have per patch using GL patch parameter i, GL patch vertices, and the amount of vertices per patch. In this case, I will have four vertices since my patches are quads. If you have triangles, it would be three, for example. Just keep in mind that a patch does not equal a primitive. So even though I have quad patches, I will still have triangle primitives. Now let's take a look at the first shader, the tessellation control shader. Here in the layout, we need to specify the exact same number as the patch parameter from a second ago. The in and out variables of this shader work exactly like those of vertex and fragment shaders, but it does come with three default input variables, GL patch vertices in, GL primitive ID, and GL invocation ID. Keep in mind that this shader will be run once for every vertex in a patch, so it is very similar to the work groups used in compute shaders. Also, the data within a patch is shared by all the vertices, so you can use synchronization and do some fancy stuff. For more details on that, you can check out my compute shaders tutorial. Now, be careful, because we now have two shaders between the vertex and fragment shaders, so that means we'll have to make more in and out connections between these shaders, starting here by simply making the GL position output equal the input we got from the shader, and then do the same for any other vertex properties we have. Now, I can finally introduce you to the division method we'll use. We'll divide our patches in two ways, the outline of the patch and the inside of it. To do this, we can use GL test level outer, specifying the side we want to divide and by how much. The same can be done for the inner part. For quads, there are four outer options, while for the inside, there are two options. Keep in mind, not all of these might be used depending on the shape of your patch. The reason for which there is an outer and inner division is so that different patches can have different inner divisions while having the same number of outer divisions and so connect one to one. If they wouldn't connect vertex for vertex, then if both followed, say, a curve or something similar, there might be some space left between them, which is not desirable. So the way these divisions happen is hard to explain in words, so here are some examples that will hopefully give you a feeling for the pattern of these divisions. So that's pretty much it for this shader. The next shader is the tessellation evaluation shader, for which we'll want to specify three things in the layout. First, we say if we have quad, triangle or isoline patches. Then we specify what kind of spacing we want in our divisions, choosing between equal spacing, fractional even spacing, and fractional odd spacing. 
We then write the widening order by default CCW. And if you want to draw points for each vertex instead of triangle slash line primitives, then you can write the fourth term point mode. This can be useful for debugging. Again, this shader also has the same type of input and outputs as the vertex and fragment shaders with the addition of some default inputs. These are GL test scored, GL patch vertices in, and GL primitive ID. The most important one of these is GL test scored, since it gives us the UV coordinates of the vertex we are currently on with respect to the patch we are in. So the shader itself does not automatically give us the final position of our vertices, we instead have to make use of this input to get our position and global UV values. Since I have a quad here, I'll go for a bilinear interpolation, which is basically the same as the algorithm I used for the plane generation. Both the position and texture UVs use the same type of interpolation. Also keep in mind that the corners of your patch might be different from mine if you chose a different index order at the beginning of the tutorial. The last thing to note is that any matrix transformations you want to do should be done here since this is the last step before sending the vertex data to the fragment shader. That's pretty much all the theoretical part. Now, just to show you a little example of a use case, I'll make this dynamic tessellation algorithm that increases the division number around the mouse pointer. So I'll import the cursor position into the control shader and define a few constants such as the minimum amount of divisions we'll have. Since the shader runs for all vertices in a patch, I'll use an if statement to only run it on one of the vertices in order to not do the same calculations multiple times. I then modify the range of the cursor position to equal that of our vertex position and calculate the distance from the cursor to the center of each edge. I'm calculating the distance to each edge rather than the distance to the patch because otherwise patches that share an edge might have a different amount of divisions on that edge which we already established as something bad. I then get the tessellation value by mixing between the max and min limits based on a normalized distance value. For the inner divisions, I use the maximum tessellation value because more detail is better than less detail in this case. That's it for this little use case. It's really cool that all of this is done from the control shader and in such few lines. I suggest trying to replace the cursor position with a camera position and trying out some terrain rendering in order to better understand tessellation shaders. Other than that, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, comment below or join my Discord server in the description. As always, a big thank you to the people on my Patreon page. All sources and resources used are down in the description. Bye!